let's continue to know that God is looking and saying, while I am ready to move in revival, I am looking for those, I am looking for those who will say, give me the nations for an inheritance. Yeah, it, it's, it's difficult. Give me the nations because, you know, this God TV teaches us 40 by 60 tomorrow. New car. Close your eyes. Imagine which one. Red color car. I-20. No, next one. That's too small. This word of God doesn't teach us gimmicks in order to be able to get the things of this world. The Bible says when they said, teach us to pray, Lord. He said, pray. Father in heaven. Thy kingdom come. Hallelujah. Can you, can you say that just now? Our Father in heaven, thy kingdom come. Hallelujah. Let's do that. One, two, three. Amen. That's the way Jesus taught us to pray, right? Our, not our Father in heaven. Everything is going bad this week. Will you please help me and bail me out? That guy got a promotion and he got a salary hike and he got something else. Will you please do something else for me? I need to get the best award and best worker in my company just now. My bank balance is going down. The credit needs to be paid. And I've taken this house in spite of you telling me not to go and take it on credit. I went and took it on credit. And I moved even though the first bank declined me. I went to the second bank and I still got it out over there. And Lord, this debt is killing me. Praise God, we are people of purpose. Our Father in heaven, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in my home, in my church, in Bangalore City. Come with me, come with me by faith. Come with me by faith. I don't know what you need just now. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. Not as it is in your colleague's house. Not as it is with your colleague's car. Not as it is with your colleague's bank account. Not as it is with your colleague's promotion. Get out of all that. God's asking us to partner with him. Hallelujah. We are co-workers with God this morning. And a revival needs a church. God cannot work without kingdom enforcers. And God says, you enforce the kingdom and I will respond. Hallelujah. We don't tell God, I have this mountain in my life. Please take it out. God says, please understand my word. Because in my word, I told you and called you my son. I called you my daughter. So go up to your mountain and tell your mountain, get, get out from here. Be plucked up from here and be cast into the sea. And because you're a son and a daughter of the Most High God and you walk in your anointing and you walk in the baptism of the Spirit that is upon you, the mountain will listen because you're not speaking just as an ordinary official of one of the companies of the nation. You're speaking as a son, as a daughter of the Most High God. Hallelujah this morning. Come on, somebody give him a clap offering this morning. God wants to move. God will move across his nations. Psalms 2.8, he told Jesus, My son, ask for the nations and I will give it for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. Why are the nations slipping? Because the people who can ask, the devil has convinced them to ask for the world and the stuff they're going to leave behind. And I pray in Jesus' name by the time this week is over, we dump the list that is dying and we take the list that will take us into eternity. Hallelujah. Because God is looking to you and to me. And he, I believe that even as we call on his name, I'm speaking on this theme, kingdom enforcer, shift the realm around you until you shift that realm in your life. Nothing's going to happen. And Apostle Paul is saying for us in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15 to 23, look at that text over there. And Simon, can you take that mic and hold it? You can read off the screen very quickly for us, but keep that mic in your hand as we, as we read very quickly over here. And Apostle Paul is saying as you go through that text, he's saying, you know, I'm praying. I'm praying, guys. I'm remembering in you, you in my prayers, verse 16, verse 17. What am I praying? That you will get a spirit of wisdom. Say, spirit of wisdom just now and revelation just now 
You see, you and I need to understand those two. We need revelation and a spirit of wisdom to obey the revelation. Hallelujah. It's no use saying, oh, what a revelation of the word of God. It's the revelation accompanied by a spirit of wisdom. Hallelujah. Because when revelation is accompanied by a spirit of wisdom, that revelation becomes a part of your life. That revelation becomes a part of your life. And so Apostle Paul is saying, I'm praying for you guys every day. I'm praying, I'm remembering in your prayers that God will give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. And he says, having the eyes of your heart, eyes of your heart enlightened, eyes of your heart, say eyes of my heart enlightened. Not the mind, not the mind, not the mind. It starts, trust the Lord with all your, trust begins with the heart. It begins with the passion. It begins with that, with, with, with something that drives you. And you don't have a reason to do it. You just know God is God and He is not going to disappoint you. Hallelujah. I still remember those times when my children were small. And, and, and I would put Joanna in particular. You don't even think of it just now. But when she was really small, I would put her on the table and Joanna would jump from that table. My son was a little more careful on that. And Joanna would say, go more. Go more. And I would go more and I'd go more. Believe me, I was trembling by the time we got more and more. And she, I don't know, she had the spider woman or whatever. You don't have spider woman, but she was, uh, she would just jump through the air. Not because she went to a science class and understood the laws of gravity. Not because she saw me lifting 15 kgs. She never ever saw me doing that. But there was something in her heart and excitement that her dad will catch her as she jumped through that air. We would never try it just now. <laughs> There's a trust that comes from the heart. Trust begins with a passion. A passion. A love. And you get ready and you jump. And you jump because God says jump. And then your mind starts getting conformed. It starts getting conformed to the pattern and the things that happened while you jumped into the arms of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That your mind follows that passion. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. first heart. There's a reason for that order. Heart, soul, mind, strength. All the rest of the stuff comes later on. But the Apostle Paul is saying, you need the spirit of wisdom. Your, the eyes of your heart needs to be enlightened. Hallelujah. You've got eyes up down there. There's something bigger than these physical eyes. There are eyes down inside there. That you might know the hope. Hallelujah. To which he has called you. Say he has called me to a hope. Uh, and, 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 and forget all the hope of that, you know, 40 by 60 stuff and apartment and all that stuff. He's called you to a larger hope. Hallelujah. He got me to a hope which he has called you. What are the riches of his? You and I have people of inheritance. Tell somebody next to you, you have inheritance. Because so many times we're looking at our earthly parents and we're calculating the inheritance. We are trying to create inheritance. Listen this morning, church. God has an inheritance for you. And if we don't understand that inheritance right now, you will be crying and fasting for the things that you're going to leave behind. It's gone. The world and everything in it, the Bible says, is dying. Hallelujah. Say it's all dying. It's all dying. Say my house is going. My house is going. Bank account is going. Bank it's all going. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter whether you go to the gym. It doesn't matter whether you go to the beautician and you do whatever cure you want to do. It's all going. Outward man is dying. Hallelujah. That's the good news. But the inward man is being renewed every day. Hallelujah. We need to be getting bigger, bigger and inward. You understand there's an inheritance that God has for us. There's an inheritance that God has for us. Someone was asking me during the week, I was at a pastor's conference. And so, pastor, what, is, what, what, what do you see as your inheritance? What about, you know, do you have a house and do you have this? I said, I don't care if I have a house. That's where I'm spending eternity and I want my house over there. And my Jesus said, I go to prepare 
a place for you. But there's an inheritance that's acting here and now. It's acting here and now. And he says you need to understand the inheritance in the saints. There's an inheritance that is there in the saints. And what is the? Okay, let's read that line together. One, two, three. Immeasurable greatness of his there is mighty, mighty power of God that's moving to us. We must understand our inheritance. In our inheritance, nations are connected. In our, it'll change the way you pray. It'll change what you ask for. It'll change the way we practice church. It'll change the way we see the future. It'll change the place of investment. It'll change the place of treasure. It'll change the things that's close to your heart and into my heart. Can you play that little video for me as, we, as in introduction this morning? Will you carefully listen to this video this morning? Prop that volume up and get us through this morning. Listen to this little video clip, just a piece of it I'm playing for you this morning. Listen to what God's servant is saying. It's new. We're looking for change in our cities. We're looking for change in our territories. But here's what I submit. I submit to us that revival can't come to my city until it comes to the remnant of believers that are assigned to that city. When revival comes to me and revival comes to those connected to me and then over here there's a fire of God that's broken out and over there there's a fire of God that's broken out. Revival cannot come absent the church. Hallelujah. It begins with us. Say that it so, begins with us. The enemy will hit us in ways that cause us to become spiritless. To be spiritless means that that place of encouragement is absent in me. It means that I don't feel the strength of the Holy Spirit. I, it just feels like I am helpless. I become Gideon before I ha he, he had the revelation of who he was in him. Come on. Gideon had to get a revelation of his greatness. And like Gideon, God raised up Gideon so that he would be able to shift an entire nation. We are called to shift regions, territories, and nations. But if we are spiritless, we don't draw from that capacity of the Spirit of God on the inside of us. Hallelujah. That's all I have for you for people onto that video. Enemy will make you spiritless. Because the greatest part of your inheritance, the word of God says when we come to Jesus, the greatest part of our inheritance is when he gives to you the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Can you say that? My greatest inheritance is the Holy Spirit. My greatest inheritance is the Holy Spirit. Okay, not... 20% of us, not these guys in the first row alone. Let's go right to the back row, from front to the back. And can we say, my greatest inheritance is the Holy Spirit? Okay, we still got only 40% of you believing that. It, the Bible says, with the heart you believe, with the mouth you confess. And what happens? And you shall be saved. With the heart you believe. Believe with the mouth you confess and then salvation will follow. Hallelujah. Let us say that together now. My greatest inheritance is the Holy Spirit. One, two, three. My greatest inheritance is the Holy Spirit. Believe that. And then you'll treasure the Holy Spirit. Because somewhere in the Holy Spirit in working in your life and my life, she said just now that Gideon was called into a place where he shifted nations. And she said the church, the church must shift nations. First AG Church, there was a phase one. Building, construction, rebuilding the ruins. And we rebuilt 
and God took 150 members at that time and we finished a building that was worth 4 crore rupees with 150 people. Nobody from outside done it but the Holy Spirit was our inheritance and the funding and the finances and everything came through us. Hallelujah. Phase two, God said in that dedication service, he said, plant a thousand churches. We have 84 churches just now and the gospel is going out. Those missionaries are coming in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Phase three right now, God's saying, don't just look churches, churches, churches. I want my people in First AG Church to become pregnant with an understanding that by your prayers, even though a missionary cannot get into Somalia, by your prayers, the Holy Spirit, which is your inheritance, can get into Somalia and change the nation. Hallelujah. Your prayers have power. Your prayers, hallelujah. Your prayers have power. That's why the devil will fight you on prayer. I'll tell you something. I've told it to you before. The devil hasn't opposed me in anything that I've done in this last 30 years of ministry. Singing songs, doing choirs, uh, planting churches, getting out in the ministry, preaching in pastor's conference. But ask me what he opposes me every single day with. And believe me, he hasn't given up. He fights me getting on my knees and calling on his name in prayer. Let me give you the good news. The battle never changes and the flesh never becomes more obedient. Every day I still have to fight my flesh. Hallelujah. But praise God, that's why you need to understand my inheritance is not in my flesh. My inheritance is in the spirit. Hallelujah. Are you catching it? Are you catching it just now? We are not ordinary people. We are not ordinary people. We don't walk by budgets. I've, I, as long as I've been here with you, you know I've told you we will do things because God tells us to do it. We are not looking at budgets. We are not looking at finances. Have we had our challenges? We have had our challenges, but has God provided everything that we needed? Any, any time we stopped? With 350 members, 84 churches across the nation. Have we ever been in debt with Jubilee Home? Have we ever been in debt? Has any family in the church gone less and less and less? But isn't it true that every family in the church has been increased and increased and increased? Because we increased what the Holy Spirit told us to increase. Hallelujah. And that's the word I want to continue to bring to you this morning. God's ways have not changed. God's ways have not changed. And, but we need to understand what this presence is all about. There's an immeasurable great presence that's coming to us. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 15 onwards. I want to continue to read this verse together as we come to God in prayer. Let's pray. Let's read this verse. Everyone together. One, two, three. And what is the immeasurable greatness of His power towards us that believe? Can we catch from there together? One, two, three. According to the working of his might that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand, say heavenly places. You and I need to get used to heavenly places because heavenly places is your inheritance. Shout heavenly places just now. Thy kingdom come, heavenly places, thy will be done. Thy kingdom is welcome, Lord Jesus, into my family, into my home, into my church. Heavenly places is welcome because heavenly places is my inheritance now in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Therefore, he says, Abraham looked for a city whose builder was God himself and not just a house of his own. Heavenly places, his power towards us raised Jesus and seated him in the heavenly places. 
Look at that story. Continue to think of it. I've demonstrated this to you earlier and I'll continue to do it just now. And I want to continue to emphasize it just now. Come with me just now, my brother, and, and, and Shalom. And I want to just be God the Father for us today. And you've got a very high portfolio just now. Brendan, come to me just now. And even as we continue to illustrate this whole picture, you see, something happened and shifted during Jesus' life on the earth. When he came down, he was taken, he was beaten, he was bruised, he was hurt, he was, he, in spite of all the things that Jesus did, he, done, he opened the blind, he raised the dead, in spite of all the things, when he done his greatest miracle and raised Lazarus from the dead, the gospel of John said, the same night they decided that the one that raised others from the dead would be killed himself and that he will be killed and he will be buried they got the tomb they fixed it all up they put him in the tomb they sealed the tomb they put the soldiers in the front and God looked down and he said I will not let my holy one see decay hallelujah I will not let him see decay you think you think that just because I sent him I have left him when God sends us he never leaves us hallelujah when God sends us, He never leaves us. If He's sending you to somebody with sickness, He's sending you to somebody in pain, sending you to somebody in tears, the God that sent is the God that accompanies. He will not send you if He's not going to go up with you. He told Joshua, I will go up with you just as I went with Moses, so also shall my presence go with you. Hallelujah. That's the God we serve. And the, and the presence comes down upon that tomb where Jesus was. And shakes that tomb open. And the Bible says that he, that he raised him up, raised him up, raised him up, raised him up. And, 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 and sat him together in high places. But look at those verses over there. He sat him in high places, heavenly places over there. And the word of God says, look at the next verse, verse 21. Can you start with me? Far above Hey, 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 every Hitler, every Mussolini, every, every ISIS leader, every kind of leader of every militant movement, every kind of ruler that came, every kind of Muhammad Ali who came and said, I'm the greatest and, and, and is shattered today, can't even stand properly when he pronounces those words. And, and every kind of power that is there, political powers, look at it around us, kings, princes, queens, systems. Bureaucracies, IAS, IPS, name it, whatever it, that's, that, what, that's what that verse is talking about. When you go down into the Greek and look, there is a system. There are spiritual powers and those spiritual powers begin to work through the other powers that are instated today. And so from that pinnacle over there, circle, 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 and you're looking at it and you don't just say it. Oh, the corruption starts right at the top. Don't you see it? And so why is that guy taking 10 bucks at a traffic light? Because the corruption starts right at the top. And the principles and powers that can't be seen. You think it starts with the principality that can be seen. And so you look and say, oh, our commissioner is like this. No, he's way down the line. This verse tells you just now, there are rules, there are authorities, there are powers that have been named and have not yet been named. Hallelujah. Whatever name you look at over there, look at that. Not only in this age, but in the age to come, you go on that Google and you're clicking to find out who's the Antichrist. Above every name, say every name this morning. Above every name. He's taken everything. Look at that. He says far above every name and every rule and every principality. And he has put. And he has put. And he has put. Underneath where? So where are you putting it? Can you take all things, all the rulers, all the principalities, all the stuff and, and put it under his feet just now? Can you signify it for us? Yeah, you've got you to put your legs over it. 
Okay, enjoy, enjoy sitting now with your legs lifted up a little bit. Okay. And after putting everything under his feet, he then said, Church, this is your head. No, it's not coming properly. It's not coming properly. He took the powers of alcohol. He took the spirits of divorce. He took the principalities of drug addiction. He took the principalities of adultery. He took the stuff that works in pornography. He took the stuff that's working in, 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 in all the prostitution across the nation. He took the spirits of suicide. He took the spirit of infanticide. He's taken the spirit of abortion. He's taken every single one of those things and he's put it under the feet of his son and then told his church I am giving the son to you come on shout a hallelujah somewhere and believe it right now believe it right now don't go home and put a crucifix to remind you the crucifix is a lie of the devil get the devil's lie out of your house if you have a crucifix on it because there's no Jesus on a cross there's a Jesus at the right hand of God the Father and the crucifix seems to say that Jesus is under the power of this whole world and he's hanging on the cross my Bible says Jesus is not on the powers those powers that crucified him are under his feet Hallelujah. Those powers that are threatening to destroy your home, destroy your future, destroy your family, destroy your city, destroy your nation. The powers of corruption, the powers of darkness are under the feet of Jesus. Got to know your inheritance is not only the Holy Spirit, but your inheritance and my inheritance is when the Father said, I have put everything under His feet. He is yours. Hallelujah. It doesn't say He gave them to, the church, to anybody else. It doesn't say He gave them to... Uh, to, 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 the, to something else. I don't know what other category is there. He gave them to the church. That is me. That is you. That's the person next to you. That's the person behind you. Come on, give the Lord a clap offering this morning. Here's your inheritance. Here's your inheritance. Look at those rulers. Look at those principalities. Look at all these things. Which is his body. The fullness of him who fills all and is all. Hallelujah. Hey, listen. My bank account is running full and overflowing. Because Jesus has been given to me. And when God said Alpha and Omega is given to me, it means everything in my life from Alpha to Omega, from the hair on my head to the soles of my feet, everything is given into me in Christ Jesus my Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I like this whole idea. It says God lifted him into a heavenly place, a heavenly place. You and I need to get used to heavenly place. The action is in a heavenly place. The action, sit down, sit down, sit down for some time and I'll trouble Jesus a little while later. But heavenly places, God's lifted him up. Sometimes we think that God, the, 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 uh, we think of holy places and holy spaces. Can you go back home and remove that? Because Christians do not believe in holy places and holy spaces. Christians believe that the whole realm, there's a whole realm. There's an unseen realm and that unseen realm is under the most high God. Hallelujah. When you have a holy place, you can only put certain amount of stuff inside the holy place. And sometimes, say, Pastor, I went to Jerusalem. Ooh. I don't need to go to Jerusalem. It's ooh with Jesus right here. I don't need to see an empty grave because my ooh is in my heart. He's with me. I, I know that he's alive because he's alive in my life. Hallelujah, church. Tell someone, Jesus is alive because you are alive today. He saved me. 
He's redeemed me. He's baptized me. He's blood covered me. He's blood washed me. And, and there's a heavenly space that's coming. And he's placed Jesus in that heavenly place. I don't need no holy place. I don't need no pilgrim center. There's a heavenly place that calls us. That beckons us. Come. It's established in the heavenly realm. In this realm, the power of darkness, the mafia, the goons, the political powers, religious powers, all of Satan's powers, all the evil's powers, every single power is under the feet of the sun. Hallelujah. It's under the feet of the sun. There's a place established for Jesus. It's a place for all rule. It's a place, the place of all rule, of all principalities, of all authorities is under the feet of a son. And if I were to get down here and ask Brendan to put his legs on me, you won't like it. Oh, how could it happen? But it doesn't matter what the principality looks like. Oh, it doesn't matter that it has a palace. It doesn't matter what its name is. It doesn't matter how big its kingdom is. It doesn't matter how big its reaches. Every principality has one place. And the Bible says it is under the feet of Jesus. Hallelujah. There can be only one sovereign. There may be many kings. But there can be only one sovereign. Who is king of kings. And lord of lords. Hallelujah. That's your God church. That's your God. That's the God we worship. That's the God we praise. That's a good, you know, I'm looking at it. Go to the next text just now. Just run through these texts. Simon, quickly read them for us just now. Go ahead. And great crowd came, crowds came to him, bringing with them the lame, the blind, the crippled, the mute, and many others. And they put them at his feet, and he healed them. So that the crowd wondered, when they saw the mute speaking, the crippled were healthy. Next and verse, lame. next verse, next verse. Go to the next verse. But immediately a woman whose little daughter had unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell, fell at, the feet, at his feet. Next verse. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and seeing him, he fell at his feet. His daughter was dying. There was a spirit of death that was around. Go to the next verse. And behold, a woman of the city who was a sinner, when she learned that he was reclining at table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask and of ointment, and standing behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears and wiped get them Get the picture, get hair. the picture, get the picture. Where did they bring the sick? Where did they bring Jairus at the spirit of death at home. Someone else had a spirit of leprosy. Somebody else was struck by blindness. Somebody else was struck by something or the other. They bought the sick and laid him at his feet. Because what is under his feet? The principality all powers. principalities, all powers, every Thing that raises its level head is under his sea feet. And so this woman comes, there's revelation that has hit her, and she can, runs into the room, and, 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 and Jesus is sitting there. She could have anointed any part of Jesus, but she, she looked at him and said, I want to anoint those feet. I want to anoint those feet. Because I know that my hope and my salvation and everything that God does is because those feet have every adversity that's coming against me. It's under those feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's worship. That's worship. That's worship. And I love what David says. I kiss the feet of the sun. I kiss the feet of the sun. That's worship. It's under his feet. And so when confronted, when confronted with the spirit of sickness, Jesus rebukes sickness in different times. He rebukes demons at different times. The demons also come. And when God, Jesus begins to move, it says, it threw him at his feet. 
Because at the feet, at the feet of my Jesus, at the feet of my Jesus, hallelujah, at the feet of my Jesus is my victory over every ruler, over every principality, over every spirit of this world, over every name that was, that is, and that is to come. There's every Hitler under his feet. And you're bothered about the name of the small guy in your office. You're scared of your neighbor. You're scared when somebody takes the name of some other god or goddess. Ooh, you know that god, my goodness. Listen, church. My security and your strength is when you know the inheritance that's on the throne. But also the inheritance that is there under the feet of Jesus. Hallelujah. God is moving. Hallelujah. God's about to change things just now. Hallelujah. The church needs to know it. The church needs to recognize it. That under the feet of Jesus is a victory for you and me. Because the enemy is already defeated. It began in that garden. He looked in the garden and the devil thought it. Na 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 na, I got Adam, I got Eve. And, the, and God looked at the devil and said, You see that woman? She will bear a son. And you will tickle his toes and bruise it a little bit. But he will crush you. And he will trample you. And he will destroy you. Shout hallelujah somewhere. Hallelujah. Your enemy, the things that the devil brings against you to stop you, the walls that are around you. David says, with you, with you, with you, with you, with you, I can run through a troop and I can leap over the walls. Hallelujah. I can do it. I can. Apostle Paul says, you know, uh, you know uh, understanding what's there, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. There's nothing that is off the agenda over there. There's nothing outside the agenda there. What a beautiful, powerful scripture that is over there for us to look at. His feet, everything is under His feet in heavenly places. Can you say that again in heavenly places? The heaven is present here. Amen. It's not there for tomorrow. The kingdom of God, Jesus walked around and said, hey, if by the finger of God, I tell the devil, get out, and he gets out. The kingdom of God is here. And he told his disciples, just run. Run through every town and tell them the kingdom of God is here. Tell them heaven is invading earth. Hallelujah. 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 Shout heaven's invading earth. Can you say that with a little more conviction? One, two, three. Heaven is invading earth. Can you really shout it over your life right now? Because you're making a declaration. Hallelujah. You're making a declaration. You make a, decla a declaration just now that in your life, it is not earth that has priority. It's not the powers of this world that has authority. You're making a declaration that heaven is invading the spiritual space of your life this morning. Hallelujah. One, two, three, say. Heaven is invading earth. Put your hand on your heart and say it with conviction this morning. Heaven is invading earth. Heaven is invading earth. For those that believe just now, there is a move of that spirit. Heaven is invading earth. And I will not live according to the world and the, way, and the ways of the world. Because heaven is invading my world. Heaven is invading where, where the doctors are. Heaven is invading where the drugs is. Heaven is invading where human trafficking is. Heaven is invading and heaven is just looking for somebody to stand there and say, Come. Come. Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus. Won't you come? It's high time we changed a spirituality. Let's change the brand. The old brand is not working. Let's go back to what the prophets had. Let's go back to what the revivalists carry. Look into the next. Time. How is this heavenly realm in which Jesus established an, uh, uh, touch us at all? Can we read together? Well, let's do that together. Simon, read loud on that mic for us. And all of us will read together. One, two, three. 
and you were dead in okay, 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 let's get that again. Turn to someone next to you and say, and you were dead. You were dead. You know, sometimes we think we're full of life. But the truth is, when, those, when you are outside those principalities, say, I am dead. I am dead. No, I was dead. I was dead. Don't simply say something. Of you, man. <laughs> but look, look at those words. One, two, three. And you, you were, were dead, dead in the trespasses and the sins, sins in, in which, which you, you once, once walked, walked, following the course of this world, following the prince, prince of, the of the power, power of, of the, the air. air. The spirit, the spirit that is now at work is in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in, in the, the passions, passions of, of our flesh. flesh. Together, please. Crying out the desires of the body and the mind. And where were nature children of worth, like the rest of mankind. Next slide. But God, God being, being rich, rich in mercy, mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together by Christ. By grace you have us and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in it, it, Christ it, 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 Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give him a clap offering. Come on, come on. That was receive, 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 receive. With everything that the world offers. Without Jesus, you and I are dead. If here, someone's here this morning and you're not working in Jesus, the Word of God says to you and me, the Word of God says to you and me, if you're not walking in Jesus Christ, that Word says you are dead. There's no life inside you. There's no life inside you. But the word of God says that God looked at us. God looked at us and even, you know, he shook the grave for Jesus. He, he shakes us and, and he, he drags us out of where we are. And the, and the word of God says so beautifully. Can you take the chair and come this side next to Jesus, please? And he seats us in, in heavenly places. Oh, that you and I will receive a revelation just now. Stop looking at yourself next door to the neighbor in the world around you. Stop looking at yourself with regard to the chains of your job, your community, the language you speak, the region you come from. That's what used to be. That's what used to be. My God says he shook me and took me from death. And the word of God says he shifted me. And I may be living next to an intolerable guy. But the word of God says in your spirit at the reality realm, try to understand. I shifted you from a world and I have placed you where heaven is coming in. Heaven is not about tomorrow. Heaven is where you as a believer live today. Teach us to pray. Pray thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Teach us to pray. Pray thy kingdom come. That's what Jesus taught us. And beloved ones in Christ Jesus, there is a critical need for us to understand that God is, you see, that's what Apostle Paul said. Understand your inheritance. Hallelujah. Say inheritance. Holy Spirit. Heavenly realm. There's something different about you and me. There's a heaven realm that goes out with you and me. 
There's a heaven invasion with you and me when we go out because we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And as we are seated over here, you and I can, can you know, put the leg over a little bit and the book of Romans says, and the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet. Saints, come on, give him a clap offering this morning. Get used to it. I'm saying it as a matter of humor, but get used to the truth. Get used to the truth. Get used to it. God doesn't want, oh my God, this person is against me and that person against me. You don't say that about people you believe cannot touch you, do you? But you say it about people whom you believe can touch you, can hurt you, can cause you harm. And somewhere you're at the receiving end. When you are at the receiving end, start looking and say, get out of this world and start sitting in heavenly places. Hallelujah. Because when you change the zone of the battle, the devil can blow you up. 40 days in the earthly realm. Goliath said, give me a man. Give me a man. For 40 days he challenged them. And nobody in Israel had an answer. And I don't know how many of your years the devil may be challenging you. But the word of God says, uh, uh, Mr. David walked by that day. And when Mr. David walked by, he looked at all these elder brother, yeah, all the other brother, every kind of brother. And he says, what's wrong with you guys? Who is that uncircumcised Philistine? He knows the place of the uncircumcised. And he looks at them, he says, Goliath, do you know who you're challenging? You're challenging the one who controls the armies of the living God. You see how, how David shifted the battle. It was not your challenging Israel. He shifted it off the ground and he brings heaven into play. And when heaven invades earth, David looks at Goliath and says, Today, lots of mints and kebabs and everything for the birds of the air when I'm done and I'm finished with you, Goliath. I see you as one big burger that's getting ready to be slaughtered. But every other hear, O Israel, Lord the Lord, the Lord is one God, thou shalt love the Lord with all your God, heart, mind, soul, mind, strength, thou shalt love the neighbor's strength. And then he goes to the temple and he bends up and down and he recites his Shema and he gives his offering and he slaughters his little lamb and does all his stuff. You know, he has a holy place. He has a holy place. He has a holy place. His religious spirit is in the holy place. He feels very religious on Sunday morning, puts on his suit and starts preaching on the pulpit. He feels very religious in this house of God. Walk is different, talk is different. Those words don't come out of our mouth. Everything is so nice over there and the devil meets you and kills you on Monday morning because you're walking in the earthly realm and trying to wear a spiritual garb. Are you catching me? And you're wondering why I went to church and this happened in Sunday evening itself. It happened, Pastor. Spirituality that finds holy spaces and places and doesn't understand there's a heaven space for you and for me. And that the God that we were worshipping is opening heaven out. Hallelujah. Say he's opening heaven out. And he says, heaven is at your disposal. Heaven is at your disposal. And you remember Jesus, at the end of it all also, he told his disciples, all authority in heaven and earth is given unto all the authority. Watch these guys underneath. Stop crying about them. Stop losing your sleep. Stop losing your food. And stop all this crying in the night and whole night and through the night and over the night. Stop all that stuff. All the authority is given unto me. You go and you make disciples. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Speak in the tongues. Because you have a culture. And you have an inheritance that is in heaven. Hallelujah. 
You have a heaven inheritance. Beloved, in Jesus' name just now, get out of earthly inheritance. The devil's not going to run from you because you own a better car. He's not going to run because you get a promotion in the office. Your life will not change even if your bank account far exceeds your expectation. But I'll tell you when it's going to change. When we spend more time in the heavenly places. For the God of peace keeps crushing Satan underneath your feet and my feet this morning. There's a God that wants to stomp something just now. And he picked you up and he picked me up. And he says, get used to heavenly places. Because you know, you know, when, when, when things are going bad with my people, there's a Moses child that is prepared in a heavenly place. When things go bad with my people, and, and Pharaoh won't know how to handle the stuff that's going on around him. This is Joseph. You think he's prepared in a prit and in a prison. But God says, I'm preparing him in heavenly places. Hallelujah. Look beyond your pit. Somewhere in that moment when they looked at this, when the king was looking for what to do in Babylon, he found a guy called Daniel. He was prepared in the heavenly place every day looking three times to Jerusalem, five times to Jerusalem and praying. And they took him because of his heavenly place preparation and they threw him into the lions. And when he stood with the lions, he wasn't alone. A heavenly place invaded the den. And ferocious lions became dumb. And they took another three guys who were prepared in a heavenly place and said, start bowing to the idols. And they threw Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego into the fire. Only to find that those who live in heavenly places, heaven will follow you to any place on earth. In the planet earth, heaven will follow you and me to any place that the devil tries to throw us in. And in the midst of that fire, the king looks and says, I threw three guys in. Who's the fourth guy? He looks like the son of man. And these guys are walking around. If it was today, they looked up and said, King, how about some Coca-Cola? Because heaven went where they were going. The powers were under the feet of the fourth one that the king looked and said, he looks like the son of man. If you believe it, give him a clap offering just now. Don't stand and cry. From an earthly position. Change your heart. Change your words. Change your faith. Change your confession. Hallelujah. Don't give up on anything. Have the spirit that looked at the king and said. Even if we die, let us die. I know whom I believe in and I am persuaded that he is able. To keep that which I have committed. Unto him. Against that day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah this morning. Oh, you see, they're the born again people. They begin to shift. They begin to shift the realm of life. They begin to shift over there. And, 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 and Jesus was able to tell that in John chapter 3. He told Nicodemus, unless you are born again, unless you are born of water and of spirit, you cannot enter into the heavenly place. Are you born of water and of the Spirit this morning? If there's somebody here in Jesus' name, receive Jesus as your Lord right now. If not, you're a candidate that the devil can destroy. If you're backsliding, you've gone away from the Lord. Something's gone wrong. A 
and you've tried to live your Christian life as a carnal, just like the others are living this life. Get back to Jesus just now. Get back and surrender to the Spirit just now because God has never meant for you to be successful the way the world says it. He's expected you to carry a heavenly place culture. Hallelujah. You're a carrier. You're a rare citizen. You're a person of heavenly place capacity. Hallelujah. Can you say that? I have heavenly place capacity. That's you, beloved one. That, that is you. That is you. Fire will bow. Lions will go down. The people that are against you. The Bible says they come running in, in one way. They'll run out seven ways. Hallelujah. Run out seven ways. That's the God that we serve. That's the God that we love. That's our God just now. I'm going very quickly just now because my time is out and I finished just now. But go over the next slide. I'm not touching the next slide in Colossians chapter 7. Go to the next one. Go to the next one just now. I'm looking clearly right now in, in Ephesians chapter 3 verses 8 to 10. Ephesians 3 verses. Go to the next one. Okay, look at that. Just go to the previous one just now. Look at what it says. Blessed be God our Father who has blessed us in Christ Jesus with spiritual blessing in... You don't find spiritual blessing in carnal places. You find spiritual blessing in heavenly places. You're not going to find it in front of your TV. You're not going to find it in a prayerless life. You're not going to find it in wickedness. You're not going to find it in the wrong music. You're not going to find it in the wrong movies. You're not going to find it in the wrong entertainment. If you are found in the wrong place, you are found in a place of weakness and the devil's going to get you. The Bible says my blessings are in... Your blessings are in? Your blessings are in? Your blessings are in heavenly places. Look at the next one. In Him we have obtained an? Look over the next verse just now very quickly. Yep. Yes, stay on that verse. For many of us often told, even with tears, they walk as enemies of their cross. Their end is destruction. Their God is their belly. Their glory in their shame. And their mindset on earthly things. But our citizenship is in? Go to the next one. And he said, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. But if by the Spirit of God, I'm, I'm going to go to the next slide just now. Yes. I, yeah, yeah, go to that. Just stay on that. Look at that verse 10. So that through the church, can we read together one, two, three? So that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to rulers and authorities, you got to take the enemy and let the enemy stay in a heavenly place under the feet of Jesus. And God says that when he empowers us through the Holy Spirit, we begin to educate, demonstrate to the rulers and the authorities what only God can do in us and through us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You become that demonstration. Go to the last one just now. Go to the next one. The next slide. Finally, in that uh, Ephesians, he says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and the strength of His. Okay, one, two, three. Let's read. One, two, three. Okay, are you catching it? Are you catching it? Just because you got baptized in the Holy Spirit, you can do everything? No. Just because you got baptized in water, you can handle everything? No. Just because you have a membership, you can do anything you want to do? No. The Bible says that there is an armor that God wants to put on you. And when you are seated, even in heavenly places, put on that armor of God. Because the devil is not going to stop simply because he's under the feet. Even from that position, he will try to get you down. Put on that armor. Don't take it for granted. Stay clothed in that armor. You must have that armor. You are a warrior because we do not fight against flesh and blood, but get against powers of darkness at this old world. Look around and tell me, what is the devil's most successful assassination against? You think that devil would only go and fight big people? Check abortion. 
check infanticide. And you'll find that the wicked devil, evil power, fights his biggest battle against the unborn in the womb. The just the child that is seen and understood with sex discrimination, the infanticide that goes on, the devil, the, you would think that he would pick on somebody big, but history tells us that the worst, the worst ones that are affected by the devil are the babies. And if he would go stoop so low, don't think he's going to pass you by. If he would stoop so low, and you know that there are more graves today for millions of babies than all people that die, that devil is coming against you and me. And he's not going to stop. And therefore put on the whole armor of God. Go to the last one. Therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day and having done all things to stand firm. Next verse. Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit and the word of God. Verse 18. What do you do with this armor? Hallelujah. You don't pray. You will die in your armor. You don't pray. You will die as Goliath died in his armor, you and I will also die wearing the armor on. Somebody shout hallelujah somewhere. And now you know why the devil fights you on prayer and not anything else? The problem is, you know, sometimes we are, we are, we are seated with armor. We've got all this stuff. And we're like, oh God help me, this person's coming against me and this is happening against me and my finances are going down and my credit is going up. How do you pray in the spirit with all kinds of prayer? Is that the way we would pray in armor? Just, just imagine for a moment, you send these guys, these strong soldiers, and they're standing on Pakistan and they're standing with their armor there and say, oh you please help me, somebody, Pakistan is coming. And we're doing that constantly. We want some prayer tower to pray for us. We want some uncle and auntie to pray for us. We want something else to happen. And here's what I want to finish it. In heavenly places, there's an armor. There's a victory that is guaranteed. And you and I don't pray in carnal places. We pray in heavenly places. That's why... The conference on Friday and Saturday. To teach us how to wage and fight battles. And then you're not just asking God protect my job and protect all these things. You're leaning over and say, can I ask for Somalia? And he says, yes, I told you to ask. Can I ask for Gujarat? Can I ask for India? Can I ask for Bangalore City? Can I ask? And he says, that is your inheritance. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a clap offering this morning. Will you close your Bibles, put everything aside this morning? I'm asking you with all your heart and all your spirit this morning. Will there be a shift? Will you ask God this morning, God, teach me about heavenly places. I need a revelation. I need a revelation. I need a revelation, God. Will you give me a revelation? Will you change me? Will you move me? Will you move me, Father God? Touch me, God. You know what? The Holy Spirit needs to do that business with you just now. If you heard this message and you're going out, 
and something doesn't click inside you just now. You'll die like Goliath in your armor. Make your prayer tonight to this morning. Heavenly places, heavenly places, heavenly places. God, shift me. God, open my spirit eyes to see some another reality. Open my spirit eyes. Because when my spirit eyes are not working, then my religious eyes, like, the, like Job's wife, religious eyes will say, 10 people are dead, you are also sick, why don't you go and die? And, but when Job spoke, he said, my spirit eyes are open and I know that my Redeemer liveth. My spirit eyes are open. I'm seated with Jesus in heavenly places. What right has witchcraft to come against us? What right has pornography to invade our families? What right does the ruler and the principality of addiction to come near our loved ones? If people that have the armor are sleeping inside their armor, woe unto those that need us to carry it through. Woe unto those that can bring heaven and make heaven invade earth. And they don't do it. Want to us if Jesus has told you and me all authority is given and we are afraid to pray for the sick and we are afraid to drive the demons because something in our mind is not yet changed. We don't live in heavenly places. We don't use armor the way that armor should be used. And something you inside you is saying just now, God, you know what? I don't know how to pray. I don't know how to pray and say thy kingdom come. I don't know how to pray that prayer. God, will you help me? Will you not help me? Because when I am able to pray that kind of prayer, I will shift. I will shift the realm around me. And the realm around me will not be earthly. I will not be weeping and crying in an earthly realm. I will be glorifying. I will be worshiping. I will be destroying the evil one. I will be destroying the powers of darkness. Because I am not walking and lying down in an earthly realm. I am living by a spiritual realm. I am living by the kingdom of God. Is that your prayer this morning? If that is is your prayer and you're saying God I am making for heavenly places just now I'm running in that direction and will you teach me to pray the kind of prayer that needs to make that dimension a reality will you just quickly I'm going to close very quickly just stand to your feet I'm going to leave the part to the, the conference later on but is that your prayer just now just get up and stand to your feet and lift your hands up and say God shift me Shift me. Shift me because there are people that need me to shift them. There are people in addictions that need me to shift them. There are people going through divorce. There are people sick with cancer. There are people sick with other diseases. Lord, if you don't shift me. If you don't shift me. If I don't walk in heavenly authority, they will never encounter the blessings of God. Oh God, will you not shift me? God, will you not shift me? Go ahead. Just lift your hands and make it that simple prayer like now. Shift me, God. Shift me, God. Shift me, God. Help me to see my inheritance. 
Help me to live every day seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Seated in Christ Jesus in the work blood. Seated in heavenly places in my family. Seated in heavenly places, God, when there's hurt and there's pain. Let me carry heaven with me where I go. Let me be a kingdom enforcer. Jesus didn't say just demons get driven out. That's all you get. Jesus said the kingdom of God is at hand when I heal, when I restore the sick, when I drive out demons. Heaven has invaded earth. And so God, I pray that you touch your church this morning. Teach us to become kingdom and force us. Teach us to pray thy kingdom come. Teach us to walk in our armor. Teach us to glorify your name. Holy Spirit, we just start here. And as we wait through the week and as we come back into the conference, take us to the level of being victorious warriors. In Christ Jesus, my Lord. And God's people said, Amen and Amen. Come on, give the Lord a clap offering this morning.
to take our place.